exalted tonight worthy Christ be exalted Christ be exalted Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Math mandat ko shiela prosto. Nat lelele bro si andamo kubashe. Worthy. 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 Worthy you are, glorious God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. We thank you. We worship. We worship. Father, we pray that you will speak to us tonight. Reveal to us, oh God. We wait in all of your glory and splendor. For you have promised where two, three gathered. There you will be in their midst. We want you in this place. We need you in this place. Come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come in your might and power and splendor and glory. Come. We ask. Would you please come? Dandos, Niaka, Bubuva, Tinine, Amos. Worship, we worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 6. It's the Lord's Prayer. And this is what it says in from verse 9. I'm just going to read just two verses of that prayer. The Bible says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, o Father, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Verse 10, 
chapter 6 verse 10 Matthew chapter 6 verse 10 thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven Matthew 6 verse 11 give us this day our daily bread may the Lord bless the reading of his word you may be seated amen Beautiful scripture we all know, my children know, my two-year-old recite this every night in our altar, family altar. And we have learned the Lord's Prayer from a very young age. Uh, but there's a powerful, powerful mysteries hidden within this prayer. And one of that is that there is a kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of heaven. And then Bible says, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So the Lord is teaching his disciples, the church, that there is a will of God that has been established in the heavenly realms. And that will of God need to become the reality on the earth. That is that what means. Let your will be done as it is in heaven. Let your will be done on earth. So there is a spiritual dynamics into how God's will is being established upon this earth. Amen. Amen. This prayer tells me that there is a will of God. We understand I have taught you quite a few times on the absolute will of God and the permissive will of God. There are certain things that are allowed by God. God permitted them to happen. We're going to touch on that just now as well. But there is an absolute will of God. There's a perfect will of God. But that will ways that will establish first in heaven. Everybody say in heaven. Amen. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What It means whatever is being established in the realm of the heavens must be done in the realm of the earth. Everything happens from that perspective in the lives of a believer. Everything. is the reason when Bible speaks in the book of James chapter 1 verse 17 it goes on to say every good gift and every perfect gifts, gift is from above. Every. Not just some or part of it. Every good and perfect gift. Amen. Every. Is from where from? Above. And it comes down. And cometh down from the father of light. Which, with whom is no variableness. Vera, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift. Perfect. Every good gift comes from above. And comes down. Way to the earth. From the father. And Bible says that there is no shadow of turning in him. It means in, in him and there is no variableness. It means there is no shadow of doubt in when God establishes that will in the heavenlies. And from there, those you call them gifts, you call them whatever. But that will of God, there is when once it's established, there is no shadow of turning in, in it. It means what God has established will come to pass. But way is happening is heaven is happening in the heavenly realms before it's manifesting, before it's coming down to the earthly realm. Every good gift. Every good gift comes from. So heavenly realm brings down the good and perfect will of God upon this earth. Amen. And there is no shadow. So there is a God order. When Jesus spoke of this prayer, he was restoring this God order back into the earthly realm. And that God is that the will of God is in heaven. And that will must be established upon this earth as it is in heaven. Uh, that the earth must receive what has been established in the heavens. Amen. Amen. Bible goes on to say that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all, not part again. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 
Again, from where it's coming from? From heavenly places. Where it's coming from? From heavenly places. And not part. Again, the word is used what? All. All spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. You must understand that the spiritual blessing causes the physical manifestation. You, mu you must understand that health you cannot see, you cannot touch, but you have it. It's a spiritual blessing. Are you with me? You feel it in, 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 your, in your body. You live it a long life, but that's a blessing. That's a gift. That can be a perfect gift. If God gives you good health and you close your eyes with a good health, that can be a perfect gift from God above. Do you understand that? Amen. Family can be a gift from above. So when the Bible speaks of the spiritual blessing, it's not just speaking of the superstitions or the spiritual nature of things, but spiritual things that are manifested in the physical realm. Amen. Because it's coming down. The perfect and good, good gifts are coming down to the earth. Hallelujah. So all, not part of it. James says every, and Paul says all. Every gift, every blessings, all the spiritual blessings. So blessings are coming from the spirit realm. They are the spiritual nature. It's amazing that God will not only establish this principle and that there's so much into it. I was just telling Shani, I'm tapping into certain things that I need so much prayer to contain myself and try to navigate my way into understanding these things uh, while I study this. this. This could be called the dynamics of the spiritual realm. Ephesians, when we, when we read chapter 1 and we go on to verse 4, it says... According he has chosen us in him. He, say, he speaks of all the blessings, spiritual blessings, coming down from above. Verse 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure. We learn this Sunday on the good pleasure. Amen. He says according to the good pleasure. So our worship brings good pleasure to God. But here we understand that he adopted us into his family for his good pleasure. Amen. The good pleasure of his will. Verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved. So this tells me that. Verse 4 tells me that he chose us in him before the foundations of this world. Now the question is how can you exist when there was no earth? That's the question. How can God choose you and I before the foundations of this earth? It means you existed. You did exist. Even though not in the flesh, you existed in Him who foreknew you and chose you. So before you were in the flesh, there was you in the spirit, in the heart and mind of God. Before he even created the earth, before he created Adam, there was a blueprint in the heavenly realm. And that's why Paul could say so boldly that he chose you before the foundations of the earth were even laid. How could be that possible? That there was no earthly ram or the physical ram, but God chose me. Where do I come from? You had a spiritual existence in God. 
Are you with me? You must understand that there is no time with God. He is eternal. It means there is no beginning and there is no end to him. That's why when Bible speaks of him, Bible says he sees things from the end to the beginning. So he's already at the finish. He stands out of time. So when Bible says he chose you and I before the foundations of this world, it means that everything that by, when, when David goes on to say that your days are numbered, it means that everything about you from your beginning to the end was already established before the physical realm was even made manifest. So he knew you. And not just knew you, he knew your beginning and the end before the earth was even created. It means you had an existence in the spirit realm before the physical realm. Amen. That's why when he created Adam, he had to create Adam on his own image and likeness. And because God is spirit, Adam was spirit and Adam is spirit. And Adam will remain spirit. No matter how worse sinners you are, no matter how, no matter how righteous you are, your spirit lives forever. Either for eternal life or eternal punishment. Why? Because every human being was created in the spirit realm as an immortal just like God. Because he was created on the image of God. Am I making sense to you? So you, that's why your, our focus is of the heavens. We are working towards the heaven. And the Bible speaks of our citizenship being in heaven because this is not our permanent residency. We may be on a, we may be on a visa here for a couple of years that God has granted us. But our residency, our citizenship is of heaven. And heaven is not an earthly place. Heaven is of the spiritual nature. This tells me that you and I ought to be more spiritual than the physical in our genetic code that's how God designed us yes. am I making sense to Amen. you Amen. so you and I were chosen in the spirit and that's why every blessing that belongs to us comes from the spirit because that's where we are rooted Amen. In the heart of the pandemic, I needed a new passport because my passport had expired. And it was locked on five. The embassy of Pakistan in Pretoria was shut down. No business at all. It was level five. When they told us to not be out even at nine o'clock. When there was no supermarkets and all of that, you know, there was time that was shut down as well. Was, it was crazy. Limited people and I remember those queues. In that peak, April, March, they started this. April, my passport expired. And I had to submit the ad application in March. And there was embassy that was shut down as well. Imagine that. What did I have to do? I had to look. They were not picking up the phones. Nothing was happening. I had to look on the internet. And I, the government immediately in urgency had made provision for the, for, for the Pakistanis who were overseas. And there was a portal open for the online applications. So I submitted online application. It rejected my fingerprint a couple of times because system must read the fingerprints properly. And I was doing that with, ball, uh, you know, the pen at home, ballpoint pen, just doing that and just pressing it and, and submitting, printing that form again, rejected again, rejected, taking my picture with the, you know, white wall and all, it rejected again, the shoulder is broader, the head is out, must come. Couple of times, but finally within two days, it accepted. Do you know that within five days, I had a knock in the peak of pandemic on my door. DHL guy with the passport, brand new passport, within five days. I was shocked. 
So uh, um, South Africa drags everything, you know, so I needed a police clearance. And, and, and I mean, they, they gave me food within 24 hours. And my brother is posting me today, and, and I just sent that to him with DHL. It arrived in five days. And within 24 hours, they delivered that. Because I, I'm not there to do anything. But they just had to check my records in, in, in the city where I was born. And they just, you know, and I had to send a consent for my father. Well, what I'm saying that I had that privilege to approach my motherland. <laughs> I'm still a citizen there. You understand that? And I had the privilege of those things being obtained that could benefit me here, that are needed here. Are you with me? So you, uh, you don't belong here. It's temporal. Yeah. And there are portals that are open in the heavens because the blessings come from there. Amen. Amen. In, in, in this transition, you are limited because this transition is of the flesh, of the body, and of the pains and aches and challenges, and the high cost of living, and the prices and fuel, and whatsoever is difficult. This transition is difficult, but I want to remind you today that you were created for heaven. You were in God's mind before you were even born. Every blessing that you are seeking will come from heavenly places. Because that's where your house is. That's where your citizenship is from. So you're not going to seek comfort. You can have all of it. All the desires and ambitions met and all the goals and purposes. But there is more to you than what you're desiring in this earth. Every blessings that you seek comes from above. A realm of heaven. A spiritual realm. Because you are a spiritual being in an earthly body. It's amazing that when, when Paul speaks of us chosen being before the foundations of this world, John in Revelation confirms that. John chapter 13 verse 8 tells me, John chapter 13 verse 88, and all, the, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of, uh, of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. Revelation 13, 8 tells me that a lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth. How is that even possible? You know why it's possible? Because when God had an idea of you and had you in his mind and chose you without the physical existence of you, he saw the need of your redemption. And he saw the need of your, of your healing and your providence and all that you need. And he summed that all up in Christ. And that's why John could also affirm and confirm the writing of Paul by telling us that there was a lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. That there was in the spirit realm already established everything about Ishtiak. He will be born and he will need salvation and he will be redeemed by the blood of Jesus and he will be used of God in the earthly realm but where did it happen it was already established in the plan and purpose of God and every provision that I needed in my physical spiritual need was provided in Christ and that's why John could say Jesus was slain before the foundations of the world it was already established that Jesus will be slain. Jesus will die for the sins of the earth. It was already established in the heavenly realms. Everybody say, in the heavenly realms. Every time he says before the foundations of the earth, it was, it was only a spiritual realm that existed before that. Are you with me? So God already purposed. Job gives us even more clarity into this thing. When we talk about the, the will of God being established upon this earth as it is in heaven. And as chosen being in the spirit. And a lamb being slain in the spirit. And then being manifested in the earthly realm. Job tells us something. And we, we know the story of Job. But I just want to highlight verse 6. Chapter 1, verse 6. Job chapter 1, verse 6. 
And a day came when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came amongst them. Where is this happening? This is a heavenly realm. You know the story. You can read through the whole. You know the story. What happened? Satan asked for Job. He asked for permission. And the permission was granted. Based on a condition that you will not kill Job. You will not touch him. You understand that? You can have his body, you can you know, afflict him with, with pain and, and sickness and all of that, but you may not kill him. That was the condition. And go. Where was it established? Where is this meeting place happening? And what happened after that? Immediately, calamity upon calamity came upon Job. Lightning striking his herd. Yeah. Houses collapsing on his children, killing everybody. Calamity upon calamity. But where was it established? But it, immediately once it was settled, what will happen? Permissive will of God was granted. God gave permission. And all hell broke loose in the life of Job. Instantly. Let me say this to you. Nothing happens by chance. In the earthly realm. Even though a lot of our decisions. Our choices are influenced by our humanity. They are surely influenced by the good or the bad that surrounds us. Nothing happens by chance. It's always established in the realm of the spirit first before it's even manifested on the earthly realm. So her earth became just a place of execution of what was already established in that gathering. All of a sudden things shifted in Job's life to a point of he literally became a beggar, lost everything. And I can tell you this, man must be wondering what went wrong, where did it go wrong? But because it was already established in the heavenlies, he could not stop it from happening. That's what James says, there's no variation of shadows of turning in him. If it is established, it is mean to happen. Whether it's the absolute will or the permissive will of God, if it has been established, there is no variation of shadow in it. Earth just becomes a place for those, for those planning and purposes to be executed. That's all. I still wonder how I became your pastor because I was our, at our pastor's gathering, you know, at this, this past week. I, not, I think yesterday they had an emergency meeting. Yeah, they're asking all the churches to submit their five years of financials because they don't have record and whatever. And I still wondered how I became your pastor. Because there's a lot of pastors who don't have churches. And I'm an outsider. I still feel an outsider, you know, you, you try to communicate with brothers and all of that. They, you know, they just switch the language, you know, the language that you don't understand. So it means, you know, go get somebody else. We're busy talking here, you know, so you go to another person, they greet you in English and then they switch the language and then you feel out like, you know, you, you understand that. It's, and I wonder how, how I became your pastor, you know. You know why? Because it was established in the heavenlies. And, and some of them still scratch there. Who really brought him here in Cape Town? Where does this guy come from? You know, who's this Pakistani guy? What, what on earth? Who would give him a church? In why would they do that? You know, while our own guys are here. Because it was established in the heavenly realm. You understand that? The, it, there was no shadow of turning in God. So there's nothing, nobody could do about it. Amen. They, can, they can try hard, whatever. So what I'm saying is nothing happens in the earthly realm without God's will. Whether it's permissible, whether it's absolute, 
But even Satan has to take permission. Are you with me? Amen. There are open doors. When, when Satan demanded for Peter, and I preached to you very powerfully on that. There was a demand. I need Peter. And Jesus just had to pray. Permissible. Why? Because there was a door in Peter's heart left open. Amen. There were laws that had to be abided. So Peter had, was given to be tempted. And Jesus says, I prayed for you. I couldn't stop it from happening, but I prayed for you. Amen. Not couldn't stop it from happening in the sense that he didn't have the power. He had all the power. But there are laws in the spirit realm. Because God has established himself those laws. He abides by those laws. That's why he will send his only begotten son to be crucified. He could have provided salvation before uh, without the sacrifice of his own son. But he had to do it. Abide by the word he had spoken. For there is no remission of sin without the shedding of the blood. He had to abide by that because he had said that with his own mouth. You understand that? Yes. Just not, he could not do things. He can do what he pleases, but he, but he abides by what he has spoken. Because there is no variation of shadow of turning in him. Are you with me? Even if it means that he has to sacrifice his son, he will do so. So nothing just happens by chance. Amen. Job, Job, Job just lost everything. Literally everything. News upon news came from every side. And he it didn't make any sense. Even when we read it doesn't make any sense to us. But you know this is where I, I marveled at Job. When we, when we read Job chapter 42. Job understood the principles of the spiritual realm. Amen. Job understood the principles. That's why there is this back and forth conversation between and him and God. And God desires to restore him in chapter 42. And listen to this. In verse 2 he says. These are words of Job. I know that you. I know. That's a lot of confidence. I know that you can do all. So it means that even this calamity came from Satan. I know you can do all. It means you granted that permission. And not any purpose is withheld. Not any. He had an understanding of the spiritual realm. He knew that God can do all. Amen. Either he will permit or he will force. But he does all. And not any purpose is withheld from you. Job understood the dynamics of the spiritual realm. He understood that even though Satan has taken all of it away from me. But I still believe and I know the confidence is I know that it's you who can do all things. And not any purpose is withheld from you. So I know even though I've been robbed and my family has been killed and I've been destroyed. My wealth has been taken away from me. I know Amen. you can do all things that there's Amen. not any purpose that is withheld from you. Verse 3, he repents, the Bible says, Who is he who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have spoken what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, yea, I do not know. Here I beseech you, and I will speak and I will ask, and you will cause me to know. Verse 5. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen you. Listen to this. Let's, let's move forward to verse 10. Now God causes his friends to go back to Job. And verse 10, this is what, what happens. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord added to Job all that he had, he had been his to double. What turned? What turned the whole shift in the spirit ram now? It was a prayer. 
after he had prayed. Listen to this. And they just not, did not come, only come back to him and prayed with him. Verse, verse 12 tells me, The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning. Verse 11 tells me, last, last part of verse 11 says, These are all his family's friends, and all of have gathered, and they've broken the bread together, they consoled him, they comforted him, they all came around him. And this is the, the, the verse says, Each one also gave him a piece of money, and each one a ring of gold. So all his friends came back, they brought money for him to start. And they brought gold. And the Bible says, latter days of Job were greater than the beginning. When the Bible starts to name his wealth in the beginning, you wonder. Some people feel that wealth is a curse. No, wealth is not a curse. I wanna, I'm tapping into something so powerful. Powerful. It's, 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 it just amazes me. There is, there is a spiritual dynamics to wealth. There's spiritual dynamics to wealth. We're going to dig very deeper into, into the understanding of the wealth very, very soon. I'm penning down some thoughts on it. And, and there has been such a journey in scripture as well. But listen to this. They brought gold. And they brought money to him. And the Bible says the latter days of, his, of Job were better and God restored double. The children were even double. Because he had children the exact amount that he had before, now on earth, but also those who were gone before him in heaven as well. So there was a double of children as well. <laughs> Are you with me? Everything was doubled. But where did it start? When he started to pray, Bible says... He started to tap into the realm of heaven. And the shift started there. Pray becomes that key. Pray becomes that key. When you become intentional about things in your prayers. Not just casual prayers. Intentional. My cry has been for wisdom. And Deuteronomy promises that I'm the Lord, I will give you wisdom to create wealth. That's the promise. The Lord gives wisdom to create wealth. We're asking for finances, we're not asking for wisdom. It's the wisdom that creates wealth. He promises wisdom. You understand that there's a principle, there's a spiritual principle. So now I've been very, very uh, intentional about that prayer. If you promise, if you have said that, I'll give you wisdom to create wealth. I want that wisdom. I need monies. I'm hand to mouth. <coughs> you understand that? I'm wearing broken shoes. I need money. I need money for my children. I can't live hand to mouth. You understand that? But you need wisdom. So you become intentional in your prayer. And that prayer shifts the things in the heavenly realm. Before they start to manifest on the earth. So in the last year or so I had a journey of ideas that I have never thought of. Are you with me? Amen. It, it, and that came in as God's wisdom to a place now where I had to pick, choose and put on hold certain things. Because there were so many things that God had allowed me to have that could create some kind of income for me, additional income for me. You understand that? And the Lord showed that it was possible. So the prayers has to be very intentional. The prayer of Job brought a restoration to a place of double. Not just what was taken, but double. To a place called better than before. Amen. What that called, Bible is very specific. After he had prayed, the, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he had prayed. After his confrontation with God, he understood the dynamics that he had to approach God. And that's why he kept crying out to God until God comes in the scene. 
Because he understands that. If I had to be healed, I had to be restored. If I have to have back what, God, what the enemy has taken away from me, I have to invest myself in pray until God shows up. And God did show up. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. God did show up. Pray changes things. And I want to say this to you. A lot of your physical challenges that you are going through. The Lord has a blessings in store for you. Amen. <laughs> Otherwise Jesus died in vain. Uh, finances are needed. Earthly men are doing very well. Church is suffering. Righteous are suffering. We can't. We shouldn't be. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Money is needed to preach the gospel. Money is needed to, to do things. It's a love of money that is the root. But not the money itself. Money is needed. If you don't have, we can't, we can't do much. Many of you want to be a blessing, but you can't be because you don't have. So enemy robs you off to be a blessing to others because of lack. How can that be godly? Are you with me? Amen. It's not godly when you desire to be a blessing, but you can't be a blessing because you don't have it for yourself. You have this guilt and you have this shame within you. You know that there is need in the lives of your loved one, but you can't do much. That's not a blessing. It cannot be. So the spiritual dynamics have to change through our prayers. And we got to be very intentional. Asking God to intervene. Because if it is established in there, then you will receive from above. Are you with me? And if it is established in there, then nobody can hinder or alter what God has already established. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Yes. And it's beauty that you have a spirit that can connect with the spirit of God. Amen. So it means that you have an access to the spirit realm. That's why even the, the non-believers have an access to the spirit realm. You know why? Because they're also spirit beings. So they connect with different kinds of spirit. They can connect because they themselves are spirit beings. But how privileged we are that we have the Holy Spirit. That we're not just seeking any kind of spirit to connect with us. Or any kind of principality. We are directly connected to the heavenlies because of the Holy Spirit. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit as if God is dwelling inside of us. How privileged are we? So how powerful our spirits must be. Amen. How powerful your spirit must be if you have the spirit of God inside of you to shake and alter and change things in the earthly realm. That's why the prayer changes things. And that's why the enemy is after your prayer life because prayer connects you to the heavenly realm. Prayer is the language of the spirit realm. Yes, Praise the lifeline. And that's why he, he, he cuts you off. He discourages you. He demotivates you. He makes you feel tired about things. But you must understand that you can work hard. You can work to the bone. But if the things are not shifting in the spirit realm. All your earthly efforts are worthless. That's why people work all their lives without getting any benefits of their labor. They retire, within a year or two they get sick, within five years they're gone. You're very fortunate if you reach 80 and you work till 65, till 70. You're very, very fortunate if you enjoy good health in that, at that age. So you retire, in a year or two you get sick, you live with that sickness for maybe eight years or ten years and then you're gone. That's life. I don't want to live like that. Neither I desire for you to live like that. So God must change. God must intervene. God must do something for us. 
Amen. Amen. He came to give life. Hallelujah. We already have life in Him in heaven. But He came to give life on this earth. Hallelujah. That we can't be bound by the bondages of sin that surrounds us. Or the oppression of the world system. Are you with me? Amen. Am I making sense to you? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, praise the key. Praise the key. Tell your neighbor, nothing just happens by chance. Nothing just happens by chance. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, pray can change things. Let's stand on our feet tonight. Am I making sense to you? Amen. You must understand this Job was a righteous man. But the circumstances became out of his control instantly. Because what was established in the heavenly realms, in the spirit realm already. His household just became a place of chaos. Because what was established was executed. By the powers that he could not see. Lift your hand. Just honor God. Say, Lord, I thank you for Holy Spirit. I thank you. Hallelujah. Just worship the Lord for a moment. Just honor God for the next few moments. I want you to pray and tap into the heavenly realms. Every purposes of God is established in the spirit realm before it is manifested on the earth. Every purposes of God. Every good gift comes from above. Every spiritual blessing is given to you in the heavenly realms. It's been established on the, in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. To God, we know that pray, our pray, our petitions can reach heaven. That we have access to the throne room of God because of Jesus, because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray tonight that things are going to shift around in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. We thank you. That just like the calamity of Job was turned after he had prayed, Lord, we pray tonight. Let there be shift in the heavenlies as our prayers penetrate the heavenly realm, the spirit realm. Lord, I pray let there be shift in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We shut every door to the enemy tonight. We ask for forgiveness if there is a repentance, Lord. Needed forgiveness, needed, Lord. We ask for forgiveness. You forgive us, God. We repent of things that we may have done, Lord, that have left an entry point. Tonight we pray that there is no more access that the enemy has in the name of Jesus Christ. You can do it all, Father. I pray, God, that you just put a stop to it right now. Everything, God, that is bringing calamity and suffering and pain and sickness into our family, Lord. Every worriness and anxiety and depression, Lord. Every kind of oppressive spirit that has held our children in bondage. God, I pray tonight it will have no more hold. In the name of Jesus, we establish, we pray, God, we seek the heavenlies tonight to intervene in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the earth move and shake and shift. Your will be done as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let the heaven, heavenly will be established. Heavenly will of God for our good, 
For your pleasure, O Lord, be established upon this earth, in our earthly flesh, in our earthly houses, as it is in heaven. God, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. As it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Lord, I seal these blessings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We honor you. We give you glory. At your perfect will for our lives, which we know is for your glory and your pleasure, Lord, is established. Your will and purpose is that none should perish. So, Lord, we thank you that Jesus paid the price for it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Amen.